What else is coming up here on the show? Let's talk about this. Okay. Universal basic income. So the city of Chicago will consider tomorrow whether or not they want to roll out one of the largest basic income programs in the country. Hallelujah. And this Whoa, will what a good city to start it in, too. Way to go, Chicago. Yeah. This will include giving 5,000 low-income households $500 per month using federal funding from the pandemic stimulus package uh, earlier this year. So the city has preemptively set this aside because they want to see what happens when there is a basic standard of living that uh, their citizens and residents can rely upon. Yeah, Mayor Lori Lightfoot has proposed uh, the more than $31 million program as part of her 2021 uh, to budget. Uh, she says the city council is scheduled to consider this uh, tomorrow. The one-year pilot program will be funded by the nearly $2 billion that Chicago received from the Biden administration's American Rescue Plan. Um, and it's supported by almost all of the aldermen on the city council. Everyone supports this. Um, it has received pushback, though, from the Black Caucus, um, which they're saying, hey, take this money instead of giving it to low income families. Use this instead to go after violence, uh, violence prevention programs. And I I don't know. I, I think that's an interesting way to look at this, because most of this violence, most of the crime ends up coming from poverty. Absolutely. Right? There is a I linear agree. relationship between poverty and criminal behavior. And when poverty rates increase, so does criminal behavior. And I mean, if it's a simple way to think about it is that all bad behavior stems from powerlessness, right? Right. So if you give these people a little bit, a little le less powerlessness or a bit more empowerment, you don't need to resort to crime at the same rate. Right, I mean, just how, think how many like times a, have we heard this? Sorry, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, how many times have we heard this story where, you know, old gangbangers are telling the story of how they sold drugs because they were helping their parents or their mother, you know, making money. And it's like if you take them and give them something to get them out of that situation where they don't have to make those choices, that right. I think the crime would start to fix itself. Yeah. Yes. I think you're right. And I think you're right about the powerlessness thing. I like to use analogies about my kids, right? And if you think about a three-year-old who's throwing a tam tantrum or crying, right? The reason that she's crying and throwing a tantrum is because she feels powerless. Like yes, absolutely. She's not, she's not being heard. You know, you're not listening to me, right? I, I'm not understood. I'm, I'm I want this thing. I don't understand why I can't just play with a knife, right? right. <laughs> like you just don't understand why the system is holding you back and you don't feel any loyalty to a, a system that doesn't hear you, right? So I want to talk more about this universal basic income piece because, look, I've been a champion of universal basic income. A number of countries have tried this from Finland to Germany to Canada. And overwhelmingly, when you look at the data, they've all been a success. They've not only well, been a success, that? they've been a home what? run, right? What was that place in California that did it? Five hundred dollars. Yeah, so a month. Stockton, California tried this, right? They started providing the monthly stipend program with no strings attached. And they did this as a pilot program to 125 of its residents back in 2019. This is pre-pandemic, by the way. Those stipends resulted in more full-time employment. So this whole like Republican talking point that we just can't give money to people to help people because they're going to just sit on the couch. They're going to, you know, they're lazy Americans. They're just going to sit there and they're going to take from the system. Turns out, no, that's not the case. In all of these pilot programs around the world and in the United States, more employment emerged as a result of it and improved mental and emotional well-being among recipients, according to preliminary findings reported earlier this year. Uh, and for instance, one of the guys, Michael Tubbs, who is one of the uh, implementers of this program, he was then the mayor of Stockton, California. He said that the recipient's largest expenditure was food, making up at least a third of their spending each month. Um, he said, I didn't know, I did, he said, I had no idea how many people were so hungry in my area, this mayor said. And they've tried this now in San Francisco, Pittsburgh, Newark, New Jersey, Denver, Colorado, Compton, California. Uh, in Los Angeles, they're doing 2,000 residents are getting an income of $1,000 a month for a year. This is fantastic. I just think that this is really, you know, a lot of these cities have gotten a lot of money. They've gotten a lot of money from an influx from the American Rescue Plan. 
and you also a lot of these a lot of these cities have also had surpluses to deal with mm -hmm. and this is an amazing way of providing a safety net for people so they don't have that anxiety of how are they going to pay for that paycheck or how are they going to pay for that rent how are they going to pay for that food and they're not living paycheck to paycheck right and if you think about the opportunity costs right that it then prevents like food insecurity is often related to people who are overweight because if you don't know when your next meal is coming, you don't ration. You're not like, oh, I think I'll fast today and then eat like a high, you know, calorie. Right. It just doesn't work like that. And so, food insecurity leads to health problems. That then is something that the that will cost the government money, right? And like less productive workers, higher health care that they have to pay for. Um, not to mention crime. Not to mention all of these things, right? That can be prevented yeah. with a small payment and a regular basis, or else you pay for that worker or that person or that citizen in a different way for something that could have been prevented. Right. Yeah. Um, Chris Paul, uh, Paulman in our chat uh, says, uh, that's not true about Germany. Um, actually, it is. Um, it is true. Uh, maybe not where you live specifically in that part of Germany, but Germany started a universal basic income program uh, for three years. Here it is. They'll get $1,400 a month so yes, this, the whole country of Germany does not have a universal basic income, Chris, uh, but they, in certain areas, um, people getting $1,400 a month for three years. Um, so there you go. Um, and it, you know, it started, uh, it started as like a pilot program. They did the same thing, by the way, Chris, in, uh, in Finland, which was a, uh, an amazing success. So a lot of these different companies, Canada has done it as well, and they've all been overwhelmingly successful. And again, that's why Andrew Yang, who is running now as a third party candidate, that's still going to be a big pillar of his, of his platform. Yes. Also, he's embracing cryptocurrency. He said he wants, uh, he wants to be the party that embraces cryptocurrency. So I'm like, all right, Andrew Yang, let's do it. Let's see if so can... punk rock. Yeah, I know. Is that the name of the third party is punk rock? Punk rock. Punk rock third party. No. A crypto what was, what super is... pack. <laughs> yeah. What is the name of his uh, third party? I forget the Andrew Yang uh, new third party. It's like it was the, something not cool. Like yeah. for the people, you know, like I'm not there. Have the people's rock. party, but that's a separate one. The people's party. Uh, I don't know. Do you know the name of it? Anyone in the chat has an idea what it is? Let me know. But, uh, anyway, thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.